Hello everyone! Okay, long-awaited video. <sighs> It's time, time to talk about Mr. Beast. Beast. On this channel, we're a Mr. Beast stan. If you talk bad about Mr. Beast, get out! Hi guys, many, many moons ago, it, it seems like many moons ago, I think it was July, June, August, I don't remember. I was invited to be in a Mr. Beast video, and a lot of you guys saw that, and I never explained it, I never talked about it ever again, I never talked about how I got to be there, why I left two days in, like nothing about it, nothing about it. Contrary to popular belief, I was not in the Squid Game video, but we were in the original Squid Game video, like which was truly, it felt like Squid Game. Last to leave the circle wins $500,000. I put 100 people inside of a giant circle and whoever leaves the circle last wins $500,000. But if you touch the red line, it's game over. I never explained it and I never talked about it to you guys. Not for any particular reason. I was waiting until Mr. Beast was, you know, gonna post the video. I didn't want to get sued. I did sign an NDA. I just kept posting on all my stories being like, hey guys, I'm doing something really exciting and I have to be off my phone for a while. Can't tell you, he he he. And then I dropped off the face of the earth for a day, a total of 24 hours and then I was back. But. I'm here to finally explain it all. What was the video like? How did I even get the opportunity? What is Mr. Beast really like? How much of it is real? And how much of it is fake? And how much money did I walk away with? Before I get started into this video, make sure that you leave this video a big fat like because it helps me out so much. And also make sure that you subscribe if you want to be nasty, if not you're disgusting. Let's get me more subscribers than Mr. Beast. Thank you. So, how the heck did I get the opportunity to be in a Mr. Beast video? The real answer is the power of the internet. I made a great friend named Alex. It's Alex's world. Alex is an amazing TikToker. You guys have definitely seen his videos. Mm -mm -mm. The flavors are melting on my tongue. My friend Alex happens to be on Mr. Beast's team. One day, out of the blue, he just asked me if I would be down to fly down to North Carolina, where Mr. Beast studios are, and to come hang out with him for a day, and then took a quarantine for five days, just so I could be in this competition to win a lot of money. But I was not allowed to know what the competition exactly was. And something within me was just like, Nicole, do it. And normally I would say no to these types of things. I just am one of those people that whenever opportunities are presented to me, I usually turn them down. And that's from like a deep rooted fear that I don't deserve things. I'm working on it. It's better. But somehow I was like, we'll do it for Mr. Beastie. And then it occurred to me that I could also bring along a friend because they needed more people in this video. They just needed a mass amount of people. And then I thought to myself, I should bring my good old pal Jakey, who is my co-host for my podcast. And we were heading out, baby. Within like a week, we were flying to North Carolina. I love you. Goodbye room. See you, I don't know when. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> If you are watching this video, and if this video is public and live, that means that I am going to be in the Mr. Beast competition. Currently, 2:22, April 23rd. No, July 23rd. Jake is going crazy. Jake is unprepared, unfed, unrested, unwell in general. I'm worried about him. <laughs> And we did not even know for sure 100% if we were gonna be in the video. We're keeping it hush hush because who even knows if I'm in the competition at this point. Jake was positive, but something got screwed along with my like paperwork and me getting approval. I don't really know, but they basically told me like, you could be in the video, but also there's a slight chance uh, that we might have to put you on a wait list. You may or may not be in it. I, I don't know. So I like flew there just kind of like, yeah, I hope, I hope so. <laughs> when I got the contract, I found out that it was like lastly the circle type of video. I knew kind of that I was gonna be able to bring some things in with me. I knew I wasn't able to talk about it. I wasn't able to have like communication with the outside world. It could last for up to a week they were saying, but I didn't know much more than that. I also was under the impression that it was gonna be like all YouTubers and influencers for some reason. And at the time I was like, why would YouTubers and influencers be in like a circle to win? money when YouTubers and influencers are known to not be, you know, underpaid. You know what I mean? But I really was in it for the experience most of all, the fact that Jake and I could have something crazy to talk about on the podcast, and also the potential to actually win money, and I was thinking of all the things that I would do with it. I guess I'll tell you. I never ever dreamed of like winning a large sum of money. Like, 
if you gave me a million dollars, I don't know what I would do with it because I, to this day, still have trouble going to the grocery store and buying stuff for myself because I have, let's say together kids, money guilt. I feel so guilty spending money. I'm working on it. We're working on ourselves. But at the time it was still pretty bad. So even if I had won a large sum of money, I was not thinking about what I would do it for myself. This is not to be like, I am so humble. I was like, I will probably give it to my mom and my grandma and like those close to me because I love them and also because I have money guilt and I can't spend it on myself. So let's give it all away. That was my plan and my main motivator. Also another big motivator was to piss off guys from my high school because I still care too much. Oh my God, you saw Nicole was in a Mr. Beast video? What a bitch. I don't know. I don't. <laughs> First of all, major props, the fact that you had to be vaccinated to be in the circle and also the fact that you had to quarantine for five days prior. They put us into the East Carolina University dorms and Jake and I were able to live in like the same little suite together. I'd be lying if I said that I slept comfortably every night. <laughs> I'm the queen of interior design. You're ready to see the, the, the pressure that is this water. Like literally wind is created in this bathroom. Maybe that meant nothing to you, but do you guys see my baby hairs flowing in the wind? Because there's wind now. This was also directly before Delta was a thing. For a moment in time, I thought I was gonna be stuck in North Carolina forever because we didn't know how bad the Delta variant was. So quarantine, brutal. It's brutal because it's mind numbing when you're in a dorm that is not decorated at all. It's just white walls. You don't have any of your stuff. You just have like, a few pieces of clothing and just kind of hoping for the best and like food delivered to you. You can't like go out to get food. You can't see the sunshine. All I did was read books one after another. I was reading straight up smut. I just finished two books in the last two days. I finished one yesterday and then I started another one and now I finished it this morning. Desperate times call for smut. One after another. We were literally losing our minds. Both of us would cry a lot. And all respect to Mr. Beast because I'm grateful for the opportunity, but the food sucked, you know? It was dorm food and it would get delivered to us. And Jake and I were the only vegan slash vegetarians together. So they would give us our little meals and it would just be like mass amounts of oatmeal and then like a block of tofu. Okay, ready? <laughs> Wait, that's Wait, a really big piece. Can it's tofu, yes. Oh, oh, oh. You don't, you like that? No. Do you not? This is the week of eating a lot of processed meals and hoping for the best for our tummies. Mine was not okay. Once again, I'm grateful for it. They also gave us like a very, very thin little sheet to cover ourselves with in the night. So I was just like covering myself with like towels to keep myself warm. And here I was at 22 reliving like my college experience of living in a dorm with someone that you hate, not having any friends, barely seeing sunlight. That was tough. That was really hard to go through again. Uh, there was a fire the one day. Someone started a fire, I think making popcorn. We're having so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> We're currently in a fire alarm. Okay. Now that I'm looking at all the people we're up against, we're definitely gonna lose. <laughs> Speak for yourself. <laughs> also a very typical college experience. That was the first time that we saw people. And it was at that moment that I realized while we were all outside in the pouring rain that these were not all influencers and YouTubers. There were a couple, but for the most part, college students. The last day of quarantine comes around. I'm like saying goodbye to all my friends and family. I'm like texting them, giving my goodbyes, thinking I was gonna go off for a week with no contact with them. SOS, please help us. I'm scared. <laughs> I have anxiety and a headache. Me too. Oh, how do you want little drug drugs? I took little drugs. Oh man. Can I bring little drug drugs then? Yeah. Like, I have ibuprofen PM so I can fall asleep easily. I'm bringing my anti BD drugs in there. Please. <laughs> We go on a bus to go to this building that's in the middle of nowhere, which is where we would be filming this video. And it is ginormous, like the size of like super Walmarts, massive, big, big boy of this building. I just bought this brand new studio and a hundred acres of land around it. 
Uh, this is where we're filming all our videos going, not all, but all our indoor shoots going forward. And it's the Mr. Beast, like, studio. It's there where they do all of the production for everything. As soon as we go in, obviously have to give up our phones. We basically get a backpack and a t-shirt and we're told to put in the things that we absolutely need, but not our phones. We can't bring our phones in. So like medication, spare change of clothes, that sort of thing. When we walk in to like the arena, that is where we are going to be sitting in a circle for like potentially a week. It literally looks just like the Disney XT games. Like, do you know what I'm talking about? It's just like turf. And they also had camping gear around and it is so bright in there. It's the best lighting I've ever seen in my entire life. But like you look in any direction up and you're blinded 100%. There's cameras everywhere at every single corner there are cameras on the ground where the circle is there's little gopros everywhere so if you step outside the circle they can see one of the small little cameras and there's people running around everywhere we all have like the colored shirts on that are like the same as the disney xd games it takes a while for the game to actually begin jake and i at some point we're still waiting for the game to start and we see mr b starting to like walk around the circle and that was such an insane feeling first of all the man is very tall like I'm talking very, very tall, like 6'3 type of tall. I'm not trying to gas up Mr. Beast, but he's a tall fellow. And the weirdest part was, was that there wasn't people like going up to him and screaming, which like, I get it. Like we were gonna be stuck with him for potentially up to a week, I understand. But it's just crazy to me because at the end of the day, he is like one of the biggest YouTubers in the world. So it was just so wild and we were just sitting there like observing him. Like he is just an essence walking through this circle. The games begin, they're like, officially the games start now, you can't leave the circle, you leave the circle, you're out and you get out immediately. There are cameramen running around everywhere. They're like all in straight up black and just running around filming any interaction and then mr beast like has to go up to start like his video you know start the introduction talk about it and the coolest thing that i thought don't sue me for revealing this the coolest thing was seeing mr beast repeat his lines or the craziest part also was like him having someone next to him and them jumping off ideas of what sounds better and what would make more sense he's standing up in the front and just picture him like this Last one to step out of this circle wins $500,000. I don't care how long this takes, whichever one of you leaves last wins half a million dollars. Over and over and over again. And then someone next to him would be like, oh, maybe say it like this. Like maybe say something different. He's like, okay, okay. I challenge all these hundred people to stay in this circle and last one to leave wins $500,000. I compare it to if you're a big fan of Disney, you probably shouldn't work at Disney World. It'll probably ruin it for you. And that's almost what it felt like, even though I, I'm not like the biggest Mr. Beast fan or whatever, whatever there are, he calls them beasties, the little beastie boys. Even though I'm not his biggest little beastie boy, I still was like, wow, this is so humanizing, like seeing him like this. And in general, he's a pretty shy guy. Like he is not out there at all times. He's pretty mellow, he's pretty calm. He's able to turn it on like a switch when he talks to a camera and then immediately turn it off once it's off, which is like similar for most YouTubers. Like I'm like that anyway. Like I'm not talking all the time this fast or at this speed or whatever, but it's just, it was just wild to watch. Also the grass on the ground is real. It's like called sod or whatever. So there were like real bugs frogs, crickets in the grass. <laughs> that was another thing. It was freezing cold in that room, which 100% weeded people out. It weeded me out towards the end, but we'll get into that. It is so cold in there, mainly because they have to keep all the cameramen and like all the production staff comfortable because they're running around and you don't want them to get hot. So it was extremely cold and people were in shorts. I think I was in shorts. Oh my God. It was, it was brutal. It was bad. And we couldn't like change our clothes or anything because we weren't able to have access to our backpacks that we packed because they're up against the wall and we only had access to them once at night. Clicks started to form. There was different groups for sure. Jake and I were like to ourselves and because we were in a bad mood, because we were super cold and also hungry, uh, we didn't form any groups or clicks. And I can understand that it probably makes us look, uh, thank God that we weren't in the video more because we probably looked like huge bitches just like a couple of bitches. Like we probably looked so mean, but that was not our intentions. We were just cold and hungry. That's really what it came down to. We started getting on each other's nerves. It was just 
all of the above. We did make some alliances, but we didn't have a click, you know? The video goes by extremely fast because you're putting one week's worth of content into essentially less than 20 minutes. That is going to basically have to be extremely fast. And if you know anything about a Mr. Beast video, it's like super fast paced. It's fast, it's speedy, okay? It's not like this channel where it's all like slow, little slug paced, okay? There's hours spent doing nothing though and nothing to entertain us. So people were starting to drop out because they were feeling bored, hungry, wanted the opportunity to win money, wanted to go home whatever their case might be. And if you wanted to leave, that was the craziest part. You would have to tell someone that you wanted to leave. Unless you were slipping out by accident, you kind of had to make it a big deal that you were leaving. They would hook you up to like a little mic and then they would do an interview as to why you were leaving, what you're gonna do with the money. And then he hands you the money and you go do an exit interview. They showed some of this in the video, but not all 100 people leaving. Finally, at night, they decided to give us food. I think it was close to midnight after the first person decided to leave and won a car. And we're like, shit, that should have been us. The dinner was from Outback Steakhouse. Everyone got a filet mignon. I hope you guys like filet mignons because we got you all a steak. Yeah. But of course, Jake and I, being a little vegan and vegetarian, they gave us, oh man, what even was it? Then we got like potatoes, asparagus, broccoli, a potato. We got, we got food and it was good. It was yummy. And then Mr. Beast sat down next to us, like while Jake and I are just eating and a camera gets pointed into our face. And this is when Mr. Beast talks to us. I had a little interaction with Mr. Beastie. Mr. Beast sits down and talks to us and he's like, you two are dating, right? And Jake and I are like, us? No. He's like, yeah, I couldn't tell if you guys were just friends or dating, whatever. And he's like, yeah, I know that you guys are, you know, vegan and vegetarian. How is your food? Like, is it okay? You know, I, I know everyone has a steak. And when I found out there's a vegan and a vegetarian here, I just wanted to make sure that you guys got food. He's very kind, very nice. And then the camera turns on and he's like, <laughs> How would you guys rate your food? How was your first day in the circle? Is your food good? Is your little vegan little stupid potato good? You stupid little vegan with your little asparagus. Is it good? Your pee probably smells now because you're eating asparagus, huh? Not as good as filet mignon. And it was a great experience. And it did not get put into the video, but Jake and I lived with that forever that Mr. Beast asked us how our food was. There also was porta potties available. Having a morning poop in a porta potty was not enjoyable, but it was an experience. The thought of sleeping at night was very scary because I was like, how is this gonna go down? I've never really slept with a hundred other people. Okay, you know what I mean. We all got sleeping bags. We got given toothbrushes, toothpaste, whatever. It's time for us to go to bed. I found out what time it was and it was past 11 p.m. And I realized that I needed to take my medication. They told us if we need to flag anyone down to like raise our hands and do some hand motion, I feel like it must have been this. <laughs> there was no one from the production team like around us, no cameramen, nothing. In the corner, there's Mr. Beast. He has his like little camper with all of his friends and they're hanging out, playing video games, whatever. And I'm sitting there going like this. The only person who answers was Carl Jacobs. And he's like, I'm eating, but he still comes over, which was very nice. And I was like, hi, sorry to bug you, but I need my medication and it's 11 p.m., blah, 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 blah. And he's like, oh my God, let me, let me check on that for you. Basically, he was the one who like instigated for us to be able to receive our backpacks back for the night at that time because he's like, people need their medication. Like you guys should distribute them out. And so they did. Everyone's getting dressed like for the night, putting on their PJs, brushing their teeth, getting ready for bed. And it's like mayhem in, in the circle. And I'm like, shuffling through my backpack. And Carl Jacobs remembers me, comes up to me and was like, did you get your medication? Like, just like, just like that. Like in that little tone, like just imagine Carl Jacobs going, did you get your medication? And I was like, oh my God, I did. And that was the time that Carl Jacobs made sure that I got my birth control that night. <laughs> Sleeping throughout the night was definitely anxiety inducing because I was just completely prepared for them to like put blow horns in our ears. That didn't happen, although I did wake up several times to Carl Jacobs just scootering around us like while we're sleeping. It'll be like 3 a.m. and he's just like on a little scooter. People stayed up all night. People slept within the money. That was pretty gross. There's like a pile of money in the center. I never had my morning poop in a porta potty before, you know, that 100 people were sharing. It's tough. But I made a do, I made do, I made do do. The next morning we woke up and we really were not decided on what we wanted to do. We heard a lot of people's stories like over listening and taking laps in the circles of what other people would do with the money. A lot of them were parents. A lot of them had student loans to pay off. A lot of them were like, I wanna give some to my kids. Some people were like, I have medical bills to pay off. And the money just did not sound as appealing at all anymore, to be honest. Also, when you are in that circle and if you leave, you're still leaving with money. It 
it's just not going to be as big as the $500,000 amount. But I think everyone is guaranteed $1,000 to leave and then also some sort of gift. I think they gave out a switch, laptops, iPhones, stuff like that. And so essentially Jake and I were just waiting for a point where it was time to leave. And even Mr. Beast made an announcement at one point. He's like, just letting you guys know until it's like the last 30 or 20 of you guys, I'm not giving out any good gifts. And that's when Jake and I kind of decided like, we're kind of suffering here. And we were just kind of like, is this worth it? Like, this has been a fun experience already, but is it worth sticking out another like three or four days when we're already in a bad mental state from like four or five days of quarantine to potentially then get like a really big prize? Or do we just wanna take a really cool prize home now and just say that we're happy that we did it and then go back to our comfortable homes that are like a normal temperature and not like 50 degrees and also get a shower and also eat regular food? What should we do? So we're going back and forth. Like one hour we would be like, we can do this. We can be the last ones. If we're the last two, we'll split it. And then we'd be like, oh, but we kinda wanna go home now. And also that was the other thing. If you get out of the circle, they send you home immediately. So we were just kind of like, we could make it home tonight. Like we could literally get back home right now tonight. So we didn't know what to do. In the video, it makes it look like we left so quickly. It makes it look like we left so fast. There's a clip of us jumping out of the circle. We did leave fast. It was 24 hours. <laughs> Some people lasted a week and a half, but Jake and I were like, this is time. We were plotting for a while. We're like, we even talked to the producers. We're like, we want to leave soon, but we want to go out with a bang and we want to go out together. We're like, should we propose to each other? Should we like punch each other and fight our way out of the circle? Should we like somersault out of there? Like, what do we do to make it fun and interesting and then potentially get in the video and then our saving grace this guy was like i want to leave i have my own small business at home i want to step out right now and then mr beast was like all right i'm giving you a thousand dollars whoever steps out next i'll double it and then five of us ran out first jake sprints out and i was like oh no i have to sprint out too because I <laughs> he didn't even tell me he didn't even consult with me if that's what we were gonna do he just dipped he ran out of there and I followed. And that's how we left. That's how we left the circle. Mr. Beast hands us huge wads of cash that were not accurate and we had to give back because it's just like wads of ones. And so we have to give it back to him so that he could continue to give those out because we got paid through, what is it called? Wiring. He gives us these fat stacks of cash. They put like the camera in our face. Everyone's like cheering for us. The lights are like going crazy. We have to go in like a little corner and it's like a confessional booth. And we talk about what we plan on doing with the money, our name, where we're from, that whole sort of thing. And when I tell you, it, it all happened so fast. One minute we left the circle, the next minute we're in the corner recording our like confessionals. The next minute we're grabbing our backpacks. The next minute we're like behind the scenes where all like the screens are where tons of employees are just like watching the cameras and what's happening like every single move. The next second they're booking our flight back to Philadelphia. And the only way that they could do it was if we flew from North Carolina to Georgia and then to Pennsylvania. So we left around, I'd say like 6 p.m. We needed to be on our flight at eight, we didn't end up getting back home until one in the morning. So we flew all that time to make it back home at like 1 a.m. And we had to ask our parents and be like, mommy, can you please pick me up from the airport? <laughs> so in total, the money that we made from the Mr. Beast video, we won $1,000 because everyone got to go home with $1,000. That was like for quarantining. And because that one guy who left his thousand doubled, we got 2,000. So in total, we went home with $3,000, which was super cool. Oh my God, I almost forgot to mention. Thank God we left when we did because the second day, they decided to make the circle smaller where they spray painted the circle. Could not breathe. It was bad. My little lungs. We were so happy to come home. The next day, I think the only thing I did was like lay in bed because I was just so exhausted, which seems like, Nicole, you did nothing, but I barely got any sleep while being there. I remember coming home and I just like listened to the new Billie Eilish album because it came out while I was gone. Took a long ass shower. Oh my God, on the flight, we had to be in like our like clothes that we were in the competition and we were like probably smelly and like, covered in dirt because we were literally sleeping on mud and like we're just thinking to ourselves like none of these people on the plane know anything that we just went through even though we literally it was literally 24 hours it was literally not that bad people stay there for a, a week and a half i really can't complain and honestly congrats to them for staying that long good for them and then when squid game came out we were like oh my god we were in the original squid game that's crazy mr beast was killing us out of there as soon as we stepped over the line shot us dead overall it was an amazing experience i'm so happy that i got to be a part of that thank you so much alex for even giving us that opportunity 
opportunity. That is how I got into it. It's not as crazy of a story as everyone assumed. But the one thing that I have to say is that Mr. Beast videos are very real. He's actually a very kind, genuine guy. His team is great, very kind, very amazing, very accommodating, and I really appreciate them. And like, for as huge of like a production as they are, and the fact that they like handle everything on their own, they really are amazing. Everything is real in the videos. It's just that some things are either slightly planned or refilmed to make the story more interesting, but nothing is like fake, if that makes sense. People were not purposely pushed out of the circle like in that video or there was not a winner from the beginning who was gonna win, like whoever won that video, they actually won it. It's just really cool. It's very inspiring to see someone who like started off as a YouTuber like me to do all that. Do I personally wanna, you know, have a hundred people in a circle as my like little guinea pigs and me making content off of it? Not I, but I'm happy that he's doing it and he's a really cool guy. So I'm very happy for him. And the fact that he's only like a year older than me is like, it hurts my ego a little bit, but very cool guy. Thank you to the team who like allowed me to be in that. And thank you you guys for like supporting me because without any of you guys, I would not have an opportunity like that. It's so crazy. It feels like a fever dream. It kind of was. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, please make sure that you leave it a like because that helps me out so much. Leave a comment if you have any questions still about Mr. Beast and what it was like to be in a Mr. Beast video. I'll be sure to answer them in the comments down below. Also, make sure that you subscribe if you want to be nasty. If not, you're disgusting. Also, make sure to have your bell notifications on so you know every single time I post or else you are gross. If I don't get more subscribers than Mr. Beast after this video, something bad's gonna happen. I don't know what it is, but something will. If you want to follow me on my other social media like Instagram, Twitter, Depop, Spotify, it's just at Nicole Rock. And if you want to follow me on my TikTok, is at Nikki Nasty. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go, go now. now. Thank you for the money, Mr. Beast. Bye. Bye.